up, we have uh, Jonah Mickelson. Jonah is 15 years old, uh, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about cellular agriculture. So if we think about um, farming meat uh, for sustainability, it's not really sustainable for the size of the globe that we have and for the, the way that we're uh, trying to remove, r reduce carbon emissions, etc. cetera. Uh, Jonah is going to talk to you a little bit about his exciting work uh, in an alternative way to cultivate meat for consumption. Cultured meat is real animal muscle, but does not involve animals. So Jonah is going to come up and blow your mind on how you can not have to be a vegan um, and enjoy eating meat. All right. Thank you. Humans love meat. They love it. And that's because it's, we, it's genetically in our systems to love meat. I love it. And whether that's a crispy chicken wing or a juicy burger, I absolutely love it. But why, why do humans love meat? Well, the first reason is it's naturally filled with lots of fat and lots of salt. And what this ha effect has on our brain is it, re it releases, it's, uh, affects the pleasure centers in our brain and releases dopamine and that makes us really happy and that's the base but our current meats have even more added fat even more added salt and even more added sugar which makes it an addictive substance for our bodies the second reason is through evolution and um, basically about 2.5 million years ago humans started stopped eating our homonyms which is the homo species homo erectus like all the homo species started eating meat, and when that happened, their gut size decreased because they didn't have to eat as much food to have the same nutrients and nourishment as they did before. And then about uh, a million years later, they started to cook their meat, which is really the reason why humans are so much smarter than every other species, but this uh, decreased their gut size even more because we were allowed more nutrients. Um, so it's in coded in our bodies to like meat. So it, it's not surprising that global meat demand uh, will double by 2050. And why is this a huge, huge problem? It's because meat is extremely unsustainable. And if you look at the water usage, it's almost 60% of all uh, sixty percent of all our fresh water is used for the agriculture industry. Um, almost sixty percent of all land is used for um, farming and farming animals, and that's included in um, the crops needed to feed the animals. And also, meat produce uh, the agriculture industry produces fourteen percent of all greenhouse gas emissions in our world today, and. What's even worse is that a lot of those greenhouse gas emissions are methane as opposed to carbon dioxide, which is almost seven times worse. So it has a detrimental impact on our environment. But there's a solution, and that solution is cultured meat. Cultured meat is a real animal tissue um, without killing any animals and without the farm farming practices that we use today. So what are some the, these are the di direct advantages of using cultured meat. It's a 96% less water usage, 99% less land usage, and 96% fewer greenhouse gas emissions. And you can see for these yourself, but these are incredible improvements on the way that we farm today. Second of all, it, uh, if culturing meat uh, and e eating meat for, from cultured is uh, get uh, ultimately gets rid of all foodborne illnesses. So uh, you can see um, the number one uh, foodborne illness is salmonella, which affects 80.3 million people worldwide annually, and it kills 155,000 people annually. And then you can see E. coli, and those are only the U.S. statistics for E. coli, and MRSA is another huge uh, problem. So these, these, we can see these direct um, changes and benefits to our uh, world as a whole. And so how, how is this um, meat actually created? So you start off with a myosatellite cell. Basically, in, uh, my, a myosatellite cell is a stem cell, but it can only be turned into a muscle cell. So we know a stem cell can turn into any other cell, but these myosatellite cells can only turn into a muscle cell. And you can see um, 
uh, diagram on the board as well. And what these will differentiate into is the myocyte cells, which are the actual muscle cells that we have in our muscles and cows have in their muscles. And uh, these are, these are going to be long uh, tubular-like cells, and um, they form together to create the myoblasts. And once these myoblasts form together, uh, they bond together, and they're going to these already long tubular-like cells bond together even more, to creating myotubes, which uh, once you have in a growing condition long enough, these myotubes um, t look and form the texture of ground beef. And that's how you would create, um, and that's how uh, cultured meat is created in a petri dish. But how is this going to be scalable for the entire world so we can actually replace all meat from animals. Well, we use bioreactors, and these are going to be industrial scale bioreactors, simu similar to what you'd see in a beer brewery. Um, they're tanks about 20,000 liters, and it would simulate growing conditions for cells um, outside outside the body, but it would just be in vitro. So um, you'd have uh, monitored carbon dioxide levels, uh, and you'd also feed it all the necessary nutrients it would need, so the fetal bovine serum that it would need to, to be growing in these bioreactors. And um, actually, Hampton Creek, which was a company that turned into Just, um, is working on creating scalable bioreactors as we speak. So what are some really interesting, another really interesting application is the space applications of this. So we know that in 10, 20 years that we might have a colony on Mars. And I feel like this technology will really be innovative on this, uh, on this uh, planet because um, it's going to allow humans to not use as much food to gain the nutrients they need, which means um, it we would be able to pack more food with every trip um, that we to go to these. And it's a sustainable option because from one cell, you can keep creating more and more cells, so you wouldn't need to keep um, sending so much food to these colonies. Um, I'd like to end this off um, with a, one of the quotes that I find um, really reflects the uh, landscape of this um, industry. And the, I don't think that in 20 years that we will be using, uh, the majority of meat will be coming from animals. Um, it's just completely unsustainable, as I said before. So thank you very much. And uh, you guys can connect with me on LinkedIn or email me if you have any questions. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jonah. So if we have time for a couple questions, if anyone has any questions for Jonah. Yeah, so uh, with the bioreactors, with scalable bioreactors, bio the costs will drop. I know that the first um, cultured meat in a Petri dish was around uh, 300,000 US dollars. Um, now it's down to around 15 US dollars for an actual patty the size of what you'd get at a, a fast food restaurant now. So I, with any innovative technology, as time goes by and as there are innovations, the price will decrease. So I think that that won't be a problem in the near future. Any more questions? OK, awesome. Thank you. Oh, sorry, you had one. Go for it. How long did you create just like one pound of meat? Um, yeah, so the growing period um, expected in an industrial scale bioreactor would be around four to six weeks. Um, and that would create full mature cells enough for cooking.